Hi, everyone. So this is our last set of video notes in the series of naming ionic compounds. And uh, this incorporates something that we refer to as a polyatomic ion. And if we just break that word down, poly means many, atomic means atom, and then ion means that that particular group still has an overall charge. So we're just looking at uh, groupings of elements that when they're bonded together, which we see kind of occur really commonly across the board, uh, they have a unique enough name to indicate that particular group. Right, so poly just means many atoms grouped together that still have an overall charge. And so some examples of that are things like chlorate, which is when one chlorine and three oxygen atoms are grouped together and still has an overall negative one charge. If you may be wondering, like, how are we coming up with these names? Where are we supposed to get this? Uh, these ions are located in the bottom right corner of your green periodic table. And so they're listed as what we call the common polyatomic ions. And so that will always be there on your periodic table, but we need to know when to pull that information and what clues are given in the name or the formula to indicate that we need to pull information out of that particular corner of the box. Okay. So I'd like you to locate your common polyatomic ions and try to find those next three by name. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Right. So phosphite is one phosphorus and three oxygen atoms that all together still has a negative three charge. Okay. And you'll notice that these names have unique endings after it. Chlorate was three oxygens, but then in that box there was also the chlorite ion that had chlorine and two oxygens. The phosphite is a phosphorus with three oxygens, and there's also a phosphate ion, which is a phosphorus and four oxygens. So these names intentionally have slightly different suffixes to indicate something uniquely different about the particular polyatomic ion. Okay? Uh, the last two examples are two of the three that I like to point out because they have uh, different suffixes. They don't really follow the pattern. Most polyatomics end in eight or eight, but the first one is actually ammonium, which is a nitrogen and four hydrogen atoms. And that's the only polyatomic that we have that behaves positively, All right? So this is gonna take the place of like a positive metal ion. And then hydroxide is when oxygen and hydrogen are bonded together and still has an overall negative one charge. I like to really point out hydroxide because it has an ending like we've seen with every other naming rule we've done so far, that IDE ending, but it's still um, a polyatomic ion. There's one oxygen and one hydrogen. So it's not the oxygen ion, that's oxide. It's not the hydrogen ion, that's hydride. The hydroxide ion is something unique. It's O and H. So that's one that you'll want to kind of recall back when we go through these names as we go forward. Okay. So we're going to always locate the polyatomic ion box in the periodic table anytime we hear eight or eight, okay? And then especially when we see multiple elements within a particular formula. Anytime we see more than two capital letters, that's indicating multiple atoms, so the polyatomics are going to be involved. So almost all polyatomic ions are negatively charged, okay, except for the one, except for ammonium and almost all end in eight or eight, except for hydroxide and cyanide. Okay, the hydroxide ion, again, we saw earlier was OH with a negative one charge, and the cyanide ion is when a carbon atom and a nitrogen atom are bonded together, again, with a negative one charge. Right. So now what we've got is an ionic polyatomic compound, the potential for these positive and negative ions, not just one of each to bond together. And they're really compounds composed of a metal and a polyatomic, but it's also possible for us to have a polyatomic, the ammonium ion, and a non-metal 
because again, we're trying to make it ionic. So it's positive and negative ions canceling out to zero. And it's also possible for polyatomics to bond with other polyatomics. You could have that ammonium ion bonded to a negative polyatomic ion. Okay, but the good news is, is all these rules, which we studied in the last two videos, are essentially the same, except we have to watch the suffix when we're writing out the name, and we have to be able to identify a polyatomic ion if we see that in the formula. Okay, so let's start with the first two examples. We've got lithium hydroxide. And so if we say that lithium being in group one has a plus one charge, and again, this is that one that's kind of tricky. So we have to recall that hydroxide is one oxygen, one hydrogen, all together with a negative one charge. I draw circles around them just to indicate to you that it's the entire thing that's the hydroxide ion and that the whole thing has a negative one charge. You don't have to draw the circles around them uh, for your homework or for your upcoming quiz. All right, so again, we're trying to get these charges to add up to zero. So all we need is one lithium and one hydroxide ion. Okay. If we go over to ammonium chloride, ammonium is that polyatomic ion with a positive charge, and it ends in ide, so the chloride ion is just chlorine with a negative one charge. Again, it's not chlorate, it's not chlorite, nothing with a T, just a D. So that's the element chlorine acting as an ion. And again, we've got plus one, minus one. So we're going to write this as NH4Cl. One ammonium ion, not four of them, because that four is a part of the formula for ammonium. Okay. And so there's something that we're going to notice as we go through these next two examples, in terms of that subscript that's a part of the polyatomic ion and how that factors into the overall chart. So if we look at the example for iron three phosphate, iron is a plus three transition metal, and we know that it's plus three because of the Roman numeral. And then phosphate, again, we hear that T sound, that needs to be one of our clues that we're looking at a polyatomic ion, is the PO4 polyatomic ion that all together has a negative three charge. So that four is just something that makes phosphate a phosphate ion. It's not saying that we have four ions that are going to be combined together. So we're looking at a plus three and a minus three. So for this formula, we really only need one of each, one iron ion and one PO4 phosphate ion. Okay, so again, we don't have four there, which is multiplying by a three, saying that we've got like a negative 12. We just need one PO4, right? But what if we did need multiple polyatomic ions? Like in this example of copper two nitrate, copper is a plus two transition metal. Again, we're told that it's two charged because it's got the Roman numeral two. But now this nitrate ion is NO3, and each of those NO3 groups has a negative one charge. So we want to get these charges to add up to zero. So that means that we're going to need multiple negative ones to add up and cancel out that plus two. So this is where we're going to incorporate the use of a parenthesis. Because if I were to write this as NO3, two, it looks like it's now one nitrogen, 32 oxygens, and that technically is impossible. So what we're going to do is draw parentheses around the group that we need multiple of. We need two negative one nitrate groups to add up to that one plus two copper ion so that that formula equals out to zero. Now, when we go from the formula to the name, all again, those same rules are still going to apply, but there's a couple of things we still need to kind of pay attention to. So in this first example, we have TISO4. And I always tell my students to look at the capital letters. You never have an element that's multiple capital letters. All right, it's always a capital letter followed by a lowercase letter. So if you have more than two capital letters in your formula, that means that you have more than two elements involved, which means a polyatomic ion is being incorporated. All right, so if we look at this first example, we've got TI, which is the transition metal titanium. So that means we need parentheses because we don't know just by looking at the periodic table what titanium's charge is. 
And then the last two capital letters with that little four is the formula for the polyatomic ion sulfate. Right? So we know that by location in a common polyatomic box, that SO4 ion has a negative two charge. And we've got one titanium. So that means that this titanium would have to be plus two. So this is the name or the formula for titanium two sulfate. In the next example, we've got aluminum, and then in parentheses, NO2. So those parentheses are a dead giveaway that we're using a polyatomic ion. And so we know that aluminum, because it's in group three, has to be a plus three charge. So this is not a transition metal. So the name for this, again, is just writing the full name for the metal. And unlike before, where we would end our formulas with ide, the polyatomic ions already come equipped with a suffix. So what we really need to do is just figure out what the name is for NO2, and that is nitrite. So that is the formula for the aluminum nitrite compound. Okay. Again, like I've done before, pause the video, try these next two examples out, see how well you do and then play and hear the explanation as to what the names of these last two formulas are. All right, so we've got multiple capital letters in this formula. All right, I always refer to this as the nacho compound because it looks like nacho. All right, but if we have at least three, this one, four capital letters, that means that there's a polyatomic involved. And so we know that we need to figure out what this C2H3O2 group is called. And then if we don't see any parentheses, we know there's only one C2H3O2 ion. And then we also have to ask ourselves, do we know the charge on Na for the metal ion sodium? By location in the periodic table, sodium is always plus one. So this is not a transition metal. So we're gonna write the full name for that metal. We don't need any parentheses to indicate its charge because it's always plus one. And then the name for this last group is a rather unfortunate name, but it's pronounced acetate. So this particular compound's formula is the formula for sodium acetate, right? And then the last one, again, we see parentheses. We see OH inside the parentheses, which is our hydroxide ion. So there's our suffix already equipped in the name for OH, but we don't know the charge on CO. So cobalt, being a transition metal is going to require parentheses to indicate the charge on that particular ion. So we've got cobalt, parentheses, and then the name for that polyatomic, which again is the hydroxide ion. But we have to figure out what the charge on cobalt is to get the complete name. Well, the hydroxide ion is negative one, of which we have two of them because of the two on the outside of the parentheses. And we've only got one cobalt ion. So then that one cobalt ion to counteract the total negative two charge would have to be plus two. So this is the formula for cobalt two hydroxide. So this is it. This is the last set of rules uh, that we're gonna have you test out with your naming proficiency quiz. Go ahead and give these some practice and then we'll have some time to review before you take your quiz.